School Board meeting of Tuesday, December 12th is called to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Uh, before we begin tonight, I wanted to make um, a small presentation to Connie Brown, who's leaving. If you could come up to the podium. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please. You can do it. I'll move that. Connie, on behalf of the board, we want to thank you for all your wonderful work and support. And we have this for you. Oh, thank you. And we also have beautiful Oh, flowers. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> We're really going to miss Connie. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hey, you have to give a speech. <laughs> she already did that. Last meeting. Uh, the first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. And there are, Charlie? Um, I would like to amend number 10, change it to a consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations with all bargaining units. Thank you. Are there any other adjustments? No. Next item on the agenda is approval of the November 14th school board minutes. Are there any changes? I have a few or two. Um, under 6B on page, is it page 12B? Um, it was Anne who reported on the school building committee. And on page um, 12C, under staff development, it's the February 16th um, staff development day, not school board workshop, to focus on K-12 curriculum. Sort of the middle of the page. Mm. Okay. Does anybody else have some? Therefore, the minutes are accepted as amended. Uh, the next item on the agenda is comments by high school and middle school reps. Are Tina Pendleton or Megan Cunningham here? Um. Our needy family project was successful, and we, um, the day before Thanksgiving, we um, brought our food to the four families. Um, we a couple weeks ago we had our first dance, and that was hosted by the seniors, and that was a success. And this Saturday we have another one hosted by the juniors, and on. Fr this Friday, um, the student council and um, the natural helpers will be selling candy canes for a dollar each to benefit um, needy families that need money for the holidays. And that's it. Uh, any questions, comments? Thank you. And then middle school reps are Lori Robinson or Alicia Chang here. Um, presently, we're in the second week of the second trimester, and um, last weekend, several eighth graders and Panko students were student guides at the open house, and um, there weren't as many people as we thought there were going to be, but um, we still got to tour a lot of people. Um, 
Tomorrow, the seventh graders are going on their field trip to the Boston Museum of Science. Um, this Friday is the seventh and eighth grade dance. We're charging an extra dollar because the profits will go to a needy family for the holidays. And um, many advisor classes are also doing this. Um, today, the seventh and eighth grade band performed a concert for the Ponco students in preparation for the big holiday concert on the 19th at the high school at seven. Um, sweatshirts from the yearly sweatshirt drive are expected early next week. Basketball season has already started for boys and girls are starting January 8th after vacation. And um, I'd like to end by just wishing everyone a happy holiday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. Are there any questions, board members, or comments? No, thanks. No? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Charlie. I just would like to thank both the middle school and the Pond Cove students who participated as, as um, tour guides for the um, opening of the new schools. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the next item on the agenda is communications. Connie, do you have some? Yes, I include, uh, excuse me, I can get through this without blowing my nose. I'm sorry. My third <coughs> month of having a cold. I uh, included in your packet a number of items. I think there's a calendar for Pond Cove uh, arts performances. Um, I did include a letter I had received from a former high school student who expressed some concerns about uh, perhaps some cutbacks at the high school in art and uh, or the arts department. Uh, I also included my response. If you had anything to add to that? Um, trying to explain that we haven't cut that department back. Um, and I also uh, included a, a letter from the governor, which I received. I've been appointed a member of the Education Commission for the states. Um, frankly, I don't think it's a very burdensome appointment. We haven't had any meetings yet, as far as I know. But I am looking forward to, uh, to joining the group. Uh, every state has, uh, just about every state in the nation belongs to that. Uh, I am more familiar with the publications that come from their, their staff uh, or perhaps some of the people who actually serve than I am with, the, uh, with their meetings, but I am certainly honored and look forward to serving on that committee. Uh, and also, uh, knowing that we're going to be talking about technology and just to keep you, give you some little light reading, I included a couple of articles. One of them, I think, um, it, didn't, it doesn't photograph, perhaps, or reproduce quite as well, but uh, if anybody wants to see the pictures in more detail, I have them in my office, uh, reminding us that technologies uh, come and go. Uh, we, we really think the computers are going to open up a whole new um, uh, wave of the future, but the, the, the Blackboard itself was a technological breakthrough as a change from slate, handheld slates um, there are, are pictures here of children listening to phonograph records in the 40s and being uh, told that this was a technological breakthrough. There are pictures of the early language labs that some of you probably had in your uh, education in the 50s and 60s, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, the typewriter, which um, has gone the way of all technology, I guess. We still use a few. Uh, so I thought it was kind of an interesting article just to remind us that uh, what comes around goes around. And the other, the last article, one called Tinkering with Utopia or Toward Utopia, um, and I, I referenced the fact that this is part of a seminar that I have been attending, um, that much of the change in education is linear and slow, uh, but in fact, very interestingly, uh, the major changes are come that way. And then there's something called policy talk which is what people typically think of as the cycles, you know, the progressive to conservative and back and so forth. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting concept and one that I think policymakers like yourselves might like to think about. Those were my communications. I just wanted to um, thank the whole community for coming to the open house on Sunday, and I especially wanted to thank Gail Transfield for all of her organization. Um, we really appreciated it. Um, thank you. And it was very, very nice. And Charlie? I have a couple communications. On December 7th, I represented to you um, on the Portland Arts and Technology High School Advisory Committee. We met from 12 to 2. Um, 
There was a report out by all members present on activities undertaken to promote awareness and understanding of paths in their communities, and I'm using this uh, communications part of our, our meeting to do that. Um, we reviewed the cooperative agreement budget between all participating uh, communities for the next budgetary year. We heard two reports, one from the horticulture program. <coughs> the PAS advisory uh, meetings are usually attended by two, two people from two of the programs and they give us a brief overview of what's going on in those programs at each meeting. This one happened to be on, on the horticulture, and um, they actually told us about the program, and they actually d uh, dwelled a little bit on the, the raising of poinsettias, which is one of their projects, which they start from a, a little seedling, and actually nurture and raise and actually sell them at this time of year. Um, they presented each member who was there with a personally selected poinsettia plan. Uh, we also heard from this um, student organization, HOSA, which is Health Occupation Students of America. And PASS has the current state president and state vice president attending. Um, and our next meeting will be in February. And between now and February, at, at our next meeting, we have to approve the um, cooperative agreement budget, which will be on our next agenda. And I have one other communication that I received from the Secretary AIDS unit um, responding to my comment from the last meeting about the, the uh, approval uh, by this board of a policy for uh, doing evaluations of the secretary aid and other units. Um, I think it was not to put any discretion or to, to say that, that these units did not want this. I just was very glad to see that our whole system will now be evaluated and that we have policies and administrative procedures in place to do that. That was my only reason for responding, and I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but I also felt that the letter I received was very offending. Thank you. Any other communications? Keith? Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, next Monday evening, uh, the high school music department will be performing, uh, the performing groups in the auditorium, and uh, the middle school will be performing there on uh, Tuesday the 19th. I guess the middle school will be in the gym. Anne? Um, I received a letter uh, last week um, about the uh, no-cut policy um, for athletics. Somebody responding to the, the article in The Courier it made it sound like I was the only one who ever said anything about athletics. But anyway, so she sent this letter to me just re reiterating what we heard so many times at the workshop, that people don't want um, to have a cut policy. Um, in the uh, you know fifth through twelfth grades, that the, um, this family feels it's very important that the children decide whether they want to play or not, and that we don't decide that for them. So, just some more feedback. I just wanted to announce that on um, Thursday, January 11th, there will be a performance in the high school auditorium of Cupid and Psyche by Figures of Speech Puppet Theater. That's open to everybody in the community. It's appropriate for children ages third through twelfth grade. Um, and adults, it's, it's very well done. And everybody is invited, it's a dollar a seat. Mm. Any other communications? No. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's report. Connie? And I have people to do this. We have, <laughs> we have a technology report front and center and we have three technologists right here, uh, core of our technology team. So um, I assume that you're going to be using the overhead. And who, Gary, are you going to start? Gary Lenoy, Andrew Lomack McNair, Randy Perkins, from the high school, Pond Cove, and middle school, respectively. We appreciate you being here tonight to bring us up to speed. I think we already have them, yeah.
material that we came before this board and presented this report on the 13th, 1994. We have put together pieces of that and some updates kind of put together. So if this can give you give you a of what happened so far, see as maybe some revisions to the plan for a year or two of it. So we want to see this report right at the time. So this was a good meeting. This was the five-year plan, and the first page of this is just a copy of the missions and the beliefs and the recommendations. And then those next two pages are the exact plan that we presented to you uh, almost a year ago. And as we get into that, in the third page, we kind of, kind of got a blow-up of, of what year we did. And we check some things off that you've accomplished on down to that list. Please feel free to ask questions and colleagues, please feel free to join in and uh, help me and if I pick anything or leave anything out. I could give you a color copy, but some of the things that are, that are in color up here are, are the things that we've accomplished or things that I wanted to make note of. Uh, shortly after this school board meeting, a year ago, we established the system-wide Technology Steering Committee, and that's hopefully an ongoing committee within the system to direct and continue the progress that, we've been, that has been made in technology. The recommendations are still here in this first list, and you can read those. We talked about networking in that second one. Some of the things that have already happened, uh, we've talked to network, networking professionals. That's why they're able to check in there. Have networked the administrative offices at the high school. Um, we have a network grade levels at the middle school because we don't have the computers at the grade levels yet. Uh, networking is under progress as we speak, I guess, in Monaco. Grade, grade one is excuse me, network. Grade two is network. Grade three is, I think, online over the next couple of days and hopefully grade four after that. It is. Uh, they're very simple local talk networks at this point, but it does allow each of the grade levels to print directly to the printers. There are a couple of little software glitches that are being ironed out. Great. Some networking is happening. And the last thing, the system wide thing, we have established a, a, a bulletin board called CapeNet. Uh, right now, it's just modem access. So if you have a computer and a modem, you can dial in. Electronic bulletin board, we can share messages, and there are conferences where you can leave messages. I posted the, the meeting, the uh, open house for the new schools on there. We want to post school board minutes and agendas and things like that. And as we get more and more people on this board, it will be our, our beginnings of electronic communication. We have 13 registered members of the <laughs> right now, and hopefully, after our in service day, we can have everybody. This same software can be our in-house uh, email type software. It doesn't have to be modem access once we are all internally networked. So we can see these packets and systems for that. The next section talks about computers, and I'm going to get back to this. But, uh, in case you're not aware, my, uh, my photos are black and white and not the greatest, but this is the Ponco, uh, the, the PC lab at the high school, which is currently on the first floor near the administrative office, is soon to be moved down next to the library. We've had a few glitches in getting, getting the, the PC, the compatible computers, but hopefully those will be online shortly after Christmas. The Mac lab, which is kind of my home, since it happens to be a general looking class, we do have the, the Macintosh computers arrived on October 2nd, the system we took delivery of. Uh, Macintosh computers and the arrangement is the 
so that uh, the computers hopefully will last us a while into the future. We won't end up with a lab of the Apple, like the Apple IIEs that we just replaced. Hopefully this will last us a while. And our Conco lab. Excuse me, Gary. Could they're motioning you to use the microphone, if you can, or turn it, maybe. Can you pick, can you pick it up? I don't know. Something. <laughs> Is that better? I think so. <laughs> I'll just do this. <laughs> Our phone for a little bit different arrangement, but again, 24 bats. They are also networked so that each of those can print to one high speed laser printer right now. And we, we do want to say that the uh, the reason that we have the whole lab at the Ponco School is thanks to the Ponco Parents Association because uh, they took part in, in our lease purchase agreement and ended up helping out getting uh, 12 other extra Macs so that we could complete the lab this year. So it is the thanks to them that we do have the two labs complete, both at the middle school and the high school. We wanted to do classrooms at the middle school, but we really felt that the technology committee really felt that we needed to replace that, that lab of Apple IIEs. And so that's where the, uh, the computers went this year. But now that we, that lab is complete, we need to start dealing with the classrooms. And that's what year two will take a look like. The next thing is uh, maintenance and technology uh, upgrading. We contracted with a technician who used to work for one of the, the firms in town and, and broke out on his own. He comes to our schools uh, every other week for three hours and we've used 18, almost 19 hours of his contracted time. Now, some of the work he's done has been warranty work and that doesn't cost us anything. If he's dealing with anything on the new computers. He's dealt with, I think we figured somewhere around 60 different problems over the visits that he's been here computers and, and printers and those types of things. Uh, it's a real nice arrangement because he comes here, we don't have to cart the computers in town to have them repaired, drop them off and then go back and get them a while later. We get a cheaper rate per hour and we get a, a better break on, on any parts. So it's, it's worked out to be a very nice agreement. Um, the staff position was not funded this year, and I think I'll come back to that later on. Just leave that. It wasn't funded in year one of the technology plan. A commitment to regularly scheduled staff development. We have begun our, our Intro to, to Mac and Claris Works class again. We have 14 teachers <coughs> scheduled and, and, and in that right now. There is, um, thanks to, to Beth Currier and the, the Staff Development Committee, there will be a Technology In-Service Day on January 2nd, and that's all well organized and ready to go. And as soon, shortly after that, what we want to do for the rest of our in-service is to do little mini courses. And we hope that some of the things that people see on that January 2nd day will spur their interest to take maybe a short um, four or five week course in some other different areas. One of the things that we are finding with the staff development course is we've had so many staff go through it now. We're getting to the point where, uh, where we have everyone fairly well versed in Clarus Works, our site license uh, program. And what we are finding is there's a great deal of interest in sort of specialized areas or areas of specialty. We'd like to be able to start the mini courses that will give people more information about smaller going into sort of specialty areas. And that, that's sort of an ongoing work, working up some ideas and working up a lot of ideas on them. We're also finding that a lot of our staff are having a tough time to commit to maybe an 11 or 12 week course. We're, we're hoping that the mini courses might fit better into their schedule and into the recertification pattern. We're looking at maybe like a four week class. 12 hours with homework, so it, it would uh, accomplish one recertification credit for the teachers, and they could take a combination of those as part of their recertification plan. The curriculum part and the administrative software are both in process, those last two pieces. So that's 
what has happened so far this year. This is what or where the committee <coughs> thinks we need to go. And some of this is a repeat. The steering committee needs to be an ongoing thing in order to, to, to keep the technology going. Uh, computers or networking first. Networking at the high school. Um, the black part is, is part of the plan that was in there last year. We haven't changed or anything like that. It's only the red stuff that we've modified. So the, the plan is still intact. And what we're saying off to the side is those, those are the, the changes or the revisions or maybe the clarification to go with that. So the clarifications for the high school is uh, there haven't been any provisions or we didn't think about wiring the high school. The Pond Cove and the middle school were all, were all done during the building process. And there are a couple of, I believe, two drops per classroom in, in each one of the, 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 school, the, the rooms at the two new schools or the two renovated schools. None of that has been done at the high school, so we need to start thinking about that and start coming up with a plan to do some of the wiring in there. Um, middle school, networking can happen as, as long as we get the computers out there at the grade levels, and it makes sense to do some of that networking to share printers and things like that instead of buying a printer for each new computer that we buy. We can network grade levels, <coughs> cluster them together, and share resources there. The Pond Cove networking is in progress and probably will be completed in the first year, so we won't have to deal with that in, this, in year two. As far as the bulletin board system, I'd like to see it expanded with more user licenses because that we're going to need those when we internally network. We have to have a, a licensed copy for every user, and every user will eventually be every staff member in the system. So we'll need to, to build up that license, maybe need a second modem and phone line so, to make it easier access for the staff. Computer, the, the computer part of this, in this, this part in here, uh, we're asked to come up with some numbers, and these are some rough estimates of what we think needs to happen at the different grade levels. Again, the black is what was in the plan from last year. We haven't changed any of that. The red is what we're suggesting for the, the, uh, the coming year and some of the revisions that we put in there. For example, at the high school, we're, we're looking at 18 computers, uh, eight, eight Macs and 10 PCs. At the middle school, since we didn't do the classrooms in the first year, we wanted to revise that to try to do two-thirds of the classroom. We said we, we wanted to do one-third last year, one-third this year, where we devoted all the emphasis and the, and the uh, resources to the lab. We want to try to do more classrooms at the middle school. So we up that to two-thirds, two and a pro that equals approximately 20 computers. Uh, the Pond Cove School is in the best shape, and they do have the most computers, but we still want to start some of those are getting older and will need to be replaced, so we want to start a plan to, uh, to do that. We can still shuffle some of the older ones around into other areas, and we can still maybe start getting a, you know, a second computer in some of the, the teachers' rooms that need them the most. Um, the technology upgrading, I, we would like to continue with our maintenance person, maybe take a look at that and see if we need to upgrade the, the funding for that. Right now, it seems like we're on track with the hours. But of course, as we get more computers within the system, we may need to have uh, more time from this technician. We would like to do some upgrading of some of the existing computers that we've got, um, adding more memory and things like that, so we can use these computers for uh, bigger and better things. My new Macs that I got all came through with eight megs of RAM, while my new PageMaker software requires 16. So I've had to do some finagling to get things working. But if we upgraded some memory in there, those will still last for you know five or six years into the future. <coughs> the staff position still is not funded, um, was not funded year one. We would like to, ideally, we'd like to see a half-time person in each building. Um, the half-time person could be the resource person and would be close to the other teachers in that district, would be a, in that building and would be a person that they would know. 
Uh, I don't know if that can be done, but we really feel that something needs to happen there. We've included in the packet towards the back one of the last few pages, a tentative job description. And we've also included a list of some of the things that are being done now um, by some of the, the technology people, but it's really unfunded resources. We're, I mean, we do it because we want to see the plan progress and I guess because we have the skills in that area. But it, it really needs to be part of somebody's job. We really feel strongly about that. As far as staff development, I've included a, an article in there, and I think Gail Dransfield said this last year, that we didn't really have enough staff development money in the budget, and I tend to agree with that. I'd like to see some dedicated funding for that. There's an article that in, in this packet that talks about uh, having at least as much money that you're investing on the technology, investing in in-service as well. So there is some research that supports that. This will especially be true as we move towards networking more and more. When we work from small area networks to larger networks, people are going to need a, a fairly good amount of in-servicing and training on how to access and use all of the networks. The last couple again, uh, even though I seem to be skipping right over those, the curriculum area, we've tried to get things started. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a time situation where there's, there's three of us and, the, and some other people on the technology committee. That we just get stretched in so many different ways that we can't be on every single committee. We need to spend some time with, with curriculum in technology. We need to start to come up with a, a K-12 plan and hopefully that February 16th uh, in service day will be some beginnings for that. We're gathering some data that we've even gathered for the January 2nd one that's showing us what's already happening out there. So we're, we're beginning, it's in process, it's maybe not as far as we'd like to see it be, but at least we've got some beginnings in there. Any questions? Charlie. I was at that meeting and, and uh, it was at my request that they come up with some kind of tentative job description and I'm, I'm very pleased with what you come up with. I also felt that because we did not staff release time and I know that these three gentlemen and um, some of the um, tech aides have also put a lot of additional time into trying to, to keep the system going and trying to promote um, a better system and and time time is getting very critical for these people and as the system grows we're going to have to look at a specific resource person um, because because the plan will get to a point where um, it won't grow because there's only so much that a, that these three people can do and we either release them or we find someone to um, take over some, some of the additional responsibilities they've taken on. They want to see it work, and they're working very hard, but there's only so much that they can do and also perform the duties that we hired them to do. It is absolutely true. I mean, we've, I think this is the last year that we can expect to have this kind of um, double duty uh, exactly what the proposal will be will come forward, I'm sure, in the building budget. So are you preparing a separate? Well, the, the technology committee actually prepares a separate one, but we, um, and I, I can't emphasize enough how important that is because the care and feeding of the machinery, uh, to say nothing of actually helping individual teachers, once you give them staff development, that's not enough. You have to have somebody available to actually make those connections. So we'll be looking for all kinds of ways of <laughs> solving the dilemma. I just wanted to um, stress to the curriculum work is really important. Now that we have these um, computers in the buildings and we have these labs, we need to be sure that we know what we want kids to learn at different levels as they move on because they really can begin at Pond Cove now and um, go right through. One thing that we are in the process of doing is gathering the information was actually put together a few years ago in a previous committee. 
and we actually outlined at that point a lot of objectives K-12, uh, and we will, so we won't have to reinvent the wheel. We will have some information to start with. Anne? Um, I just want to clarify um, one thing. The staff person you're talking about now is one full-time person for the whole system rather than three half-time people. <laughs> I can answer that because we had, we had an extended discussion because the plan called for three half-time right. people, which is essentially <laughs> one and a half FTEs. I'm really pushing for one full-time FTE person, but that's one person. But that's the, but that's what we're talking about in this job description. You're talking about one person to deal with all the buildings, or as opposed to, or or the the recommendation from the initial is three half right. time for that year. But are you going to decide before budget time? I think. <laughs> 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 or. Especially if you're saying no matter who's doing it, yeah, it's two people half time. But those basically things that have to be done. Have right. Is what it comes to. Right. Our side of it, what we were talking about was that a, having, again, a resource in each building, even if it was, maybe we end up making, I know how, we all know how much it's are, you know, but <laughs> maybe end up being, I think, a third of a person in each building this year, that's all that happens. But at least there's something we, people come to me because I'm in my building. Uh, how comfortable people feel chasing someone down that they don't really know, and they're housed at the high school. I mean, that, that was some issues that we talked about. So I think it has to be some discussion to go on. Consistency with one person overseeing it all would be nice, though. I, I understand the issues of chasing somebody down, but. It, it boils down to a lot of the, the campus concept and system concept, and, and those are discussions, those are disagreements. A dis I feel one way. We are not a big, we are not a big geographic area we can share resources and it takes some planning and some time management but it's not like we have to get in our car and travel 20 25 miles right. we've had this discussion before right. about other things other things right. that i the reality is you're looking there's the proposal would be one and a half ftes what's the reality you no know, would it be easier to really hire one full FTE who really supervises the whole system. And it's going to have to come to that. I mean, that's, that's actually year three. And if we're moving as fast and as, you know, as, as we are, we have to move up that timeline. I have one more. Um, this is just a plea for the middle school. Um, I really think if there's any possible way we can get computers in every one of those classrooms next year, we really should do that. Um, I really think uh, that the teachers are hampered by not having those computers. And, um, you know, Pond Cove is in pretty good shape now. I think we could, you know, do the poor middle child a favor. <laughs> and, and give the middle school the computers they need to just get up to speed once. Um, Nancy's so, so happy to hear me say this, <laughs> I know. But. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things that I put in all this is we've talked about tonight, but it's so much, okay, well, it's much as little space on it, um, is like say if we said that Pronko needed 10 updated computers. We may end up taking some of their older computers to just bring to us because a lot of people don't need all the technology. So really, it may end up filling all the classrooms. It just may not be the brand newest machines, but they would be one which would have basically the same capabilities on a slow level. Um, so it's not like we replace ten of Pond Coves and just heading to the dump or something. I mean, they would be put um, someplace else. So that was it's not all in here, um, but that was another talk we had that that would be a possibility and that would fill probably that extra ten if we would probably be enough to fill. So each grade level may have like four brand new ones and two, you know, or one of the older models or something like that. So there may be some ways of minimizing. Yeah, I, I do hope that people are looking. I, I was the one who compiled all those questionnaires yeah. about what people are doing now. And, and I hope we are really looking at what people are using computers for and making sure that, you know, I mean, some people just don't need 
um, the capability now that other that other people truly do. So I hope we're we're really looking at people's particular particular needs right now. Um, but again, really, I think it would be important to outfit each classroom, especially now that the teachers are being expected to do report cards and such on their computers. I think it's only fair if we're going to ask them to do that to give them access to a computer to do it. And I, th I think once we have a software policy and we clean up some of these computers that have personal programs on them, that we have a, you know, we have a system <laughs> policy that may eliminate some of the problems that these people, they deal with a lot more software problems than they probably do with hardware problems. And it's because people have brought in programs that they're more comfortable with. But I think once the in-services teach them and show them that what we have in place may be more, more efficient and, and that they can use them better, then we can get rid of some of this other stuff. But we need a policy that says you only have on there what the system is licensed for. We've talked about that in the committee, but really that's a school board. Mm -hmm. also, We're trying to find We can make some suggestions. Mm -hmm. and some Please make the suggestions. I don't think any of us would have the faintest clue how to well, start. We're, we're trying to find a policy out there. <laughs> this is a new field. So this great. is a new yeah, area. Yeah, right. yes. Every school deals with it everywhere. I mean, it's, not. It's, it's, it's looking at the ethical issues of it. We actually put out to the meeting internet a request for language for policy. And we do have some general things in my work as a question. And I also asked them to come up with the numbers, you know, projected numbers that they would want. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they've really actually looked. Right. It may, and I don't think that the committee has actually sat down and prioritized what, if we have to make a choice, what would you recommend? Hopefully you give a little to everything, but if there's a specific need in some part of the system, that's the purpose of the steering committee is to right. recommend that need. You guys are doing a great job. Mm, yeah. it's, it's astonishing the amount of time and effort that you put in. I hope people understand that. Without release time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. I would like to thank all the other members of the committee also for really putting a lot of time in that with all the colleagues who have worked very, very hard on this. Thank you. Well, thank you for all your work. <laughs> it's really an exciting piece of the curriculum. That's it. That's it? Yep, thanks. <clears throat>
we came up with the acronym FACE 2000, which is, stands for Fully Accessible Cape Elizabeth by the year 2000. And that, in a nutshell, is the goal of the ADA Committee. Our primary efforts are going to be focused in three areas, which you have in front of you. The first is to improve access to programs and facilities. This is what most people think of first when they think of ADA. They think of trying to get into a building, <coughs> trying to get up steps with or without elevators, functioning or non, and the ability to understand what's happening once they get inside, whether they need an interpreter, whether they need hearing assistance, whether they need large print, whatever. This is the most commonly thought of aspect of ADA. And it is one part of ADA, but it is only one part. I probably should have written this differently because another really key part of this is not just programs and facilities, but mixed in with programs are services. And that's very important because the law states that people are entitled to the services and benefits of programs and facilities as well. So we may not think of, for example, the Cape Courier as a town program, but it certainly is one of the benefits and services that our residents have, and they need access to the Cape Courier. Family Fun Day and school open houses and school concerts and school plays are the benefits and the services as well as part of the program and the facilities, and they also must be accessible. So that's the first step. The second part is to increase awareness and understanding. Uh, my friends from around the country who are other ADA coordinators that have been helping Phase 2000 via the internet, technology at work, say this is going to be the toughest part. They say increasing awareness and understanding. Every message that I got back had some reference with good luck with the second half of number two. Let us know how it works. The third part is developing and maintaining resources, and that's a really key feature for our committee. We have to be a resource that people can access, whether that's a school committee or a planning group or a business com committee. This is a town-wide committee, and I think part of the confusion has arisen because when it first began, it was kind of a crisis management situation with specific issues, many of which focused around the school itself and various buildings which were in such serious problems. Others, like town hall, and it was sort of a process of putting out brush fires every which way. Well, most of the brush fires, knock on wood, are, if not put out, they're at least under control and sort of smoldering at best. So now we're looking toward some proactive planning to make this a truly accessible community where people don't have to go through hoops and don't have to go into a crisis mode to be able to access the things to which they have a right. Part of that is our resources. We have now connected, and I'm very happy about this, to say that we are part of the National Organization on Disabilities Community Partnership Program. And among other things, that gives us access to something called JAN, which is the Job Accommodation Network, which is a toll-free hookup where, let's say that, uh, Gail, you come in and you have a problem trying to get to something and, and you want to stay a school board member, but there's something you can't do anymore. Maybe you suddenly are deaf or you can't write or whatever. And everyone else says, well, we just, there's no way we can accommodate that. We can call Jan, and they have in their files and databases hundreds of thousands of examples of different employment problems and programming problems that have come up and how other places have solved those. That's a tremendous resource for us. And through the ADA committee, that resource is available to the whole town. We're going to be using the town library extensively as a basis. One of the things that we will be asking of the school board is that we get copies of your minutes, your agendas. We've already spoken to the middle school parents association about their newsletter. Pond Cove and the high school will be contacted as well. In today's technology, going from the report that you got to a large print edition is very simple. It's just a matter of pushing buttons and planning ahead and doing it. 
part of our committee's goal is to be very realistic and very reasonable. The law allows that, despite some of the publicity about absurd case interpretations. The law is a very reasonable law. And it doesn't say that you have to have large print editions of everything that you ever put into print available in triplicate, sent out, and so forth. It has to be available. And our answer to that as a committee in many cases is, all right, let's put one copy at the town library which immediately gives it access to every community member, every visitor, every student, every adult in the entire community. In looking over the past records of ADA, it occurred to me that for a committee that serves both the school system and the town at large, I couldn't find any record of us ever letting you guys know what we were doing. I don't know how we got away with it so long. Maybe I should have just stayed quiet and in my little corner. But that didn't seem appropriate, and we would like to propose that we report to you at least annually, probably twice a year, letting you know what are our plans, how are we doing, what are we coming to you for next, what are we going to offer you in terms of assistance. We are a resource. We do not have a huge amount of power. We are an advisory committee. But we would like to be able to be a very proactive, supportive advisory committee and to be able to make it so that we don't have crises and so that people coming into this community don't pose problems but pose opportunities. Right now, if students come into the school system or if a parent comes in, there's no system, there's no protocol for us to follow. One of our first orders of business, for example, is to have a town-wide protocol whereby someone who wants to attend an event and may need special assistance knows immediately I call this telephone number either personally or through the telephone relay service if I'm unable to use a telephone personally and I request this two weeks in advance and if I call this number and give them two weeks notice it will be taken care of. That sure is a huge improvement over someone showing up at a concert or showing up at a parent conference or showing up at a town council meeting or a school board meeting and suddenly people up here scrambling around to find an interpreter or assistive hearing devices or whatever. We don't need to have everything in place. We just need to know where to find them and how to get them. And we need to be prepared to do that because that's the law. Hopefully the ADA committee can be a resource for the school system as well as for the whole town in doing that. And we hope that the, that the school system will be equal partners with the town. And other than that, we just wanted to let you know what was going on. We've been working. <laughs> and does anybody have any questions? You may have read the Cape Courier articles, and that's going to be a regular feature now. I just, Gail, it's wonderful. I've never heard anything that the ADA committee was doing <laughs> in terms of a report, so it's wonderful to hear a report. Do you report to the town council also? Uh, last night, right here. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did. I, but there had been no previous reports that I know of. And by the way, we would welcome a school board representative to attend our meetings. They're the second Wednesday of every month, right behind you, in a fully accessible room. And they're not terribly long. We have changed the format of the committee and not having a large group of people who are required to come every single month, but we try and have a focus at each committee meeting. For example, this month is on communication in the Cape Courier and the newsletters. January's meeting, oh, and budget, <laughs> by the way. And then January's meeting is focusing on how we can elicit and use volunteers most effectively. So for those meetings, we call and issue special invitations to people who would be most directly involved. Sue Weatherby frequently comes representing community services, but if we're dealing with issues that are more likely to affect seniors than sometimes Karen Allen might come instead, for example. Jay Sherma comes from the library, but if it's regarding the children's library and finding interpreters for the story times or making those more accessible, then Rachel Quink may come to the meeting instead. So maybe you could rotate it and come Are they in the evening? No, they are in the afternoon, but we do have them twice, a, we're hoping to have them twice a year in the evening to make that more feasible too. Evenings are a problem because many people do not have the vision to be able to come and to drive in the evenings and that's one, one thing we have gotten a letter on. 
Well, if there are school board members who are interested, I'm sure we'd like to be notified of your times and the second Wednesday of the month. Yep. Any other questions? Other questions, comments? Well, this committee started four years ago, kind of forgotten, um, in the midst of uh, all kinds of non-accessible issues, including this town, so, I mean, this building that we're sitting in. So, been a lot of improvement since then. And um, the committee, whether the board is, has heard the reports or not, you, we have had a good deal of discussion through the budget process and through the building committee process of the issues that have most directly affected um, as far as buildings in or access, that type of thing. But uh, it's, it, it's really nice to see a new face evolving and um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch. Thank you. And thank you for all your efforts. Um, okay, moving on, and the next items will just be fairly quick reports because uh, I'll simply bring you up to date very quickly. In your packets, you had a copy of this year's uh, 11th grade MEAs. Um, as I noted in your packet, and you probably noticed in the, uh, if you looked in Sunday's paper uh, and looked at the comparison scores that are in your packet, the um, this year's scores were, were somewhat lower than what we've had in the past, but of course you also have the new uh, issue of the um, uh, the open-ended questions and the numbers of distinguished and so forth, as you uh, I think are used to seeing from the having seen them at the eighth grade and fourth grade levels. I uh, included in your packet also, or I think it was given to you uh, just this evening a news release from the state which gives you some background about that and some general explanation. You also have in your packet a yellow sheet that reported on this class, but it also did try to call to your attention that um, the, week, the month of May when those tests were given was a particularly uh, disruptive month at the high school and, and several events there are listed. It also, of course, is the exam that was uh, delayed because of some concerns about the makeup of the exam and then we had youngsters who were caught in between with makeup SAT exams and we had a few who actually never did finish it. So those are all factors um, and I know that you will be hearing more about uh, the general summary of this when you have your workshop on testing throughout the district. So unless you have any other comment or question, I'll move on. Okay. Um, National Science Foundation grant, we are continuing to meet. And again, this evening you have a couple of handouts that I didn't have any time to put in your packet. I want to thank uh, Tom Eismeyer and Ren Wilkinson, uh, two of our members of our core team, who took the uh, rather rough vision statement that, or the draft vision statement that was in your packet last month as a result of the visioning exercise. Uh, they were given the, uh, I think they volunteered, but whichever <laughs> way it went, uh, okay, uh, the task of um, actually polishing that up. And we had a uh, three-town core team meeting yesterday at which this was presented and accepted, and uh, generally we feel this is a real improvement over the draft that, that we did have. You haven't had time to really study it, but I think you will see that it works well. We also talked about various ways of getting uh, some information out uh, to the community. They, I included a handout that the South Portland people gave us yesterday. We thought that was such a good idea. You'll probably see us emulating it. Um, and then there's a chart that, again, tries to give you some sense of the major uh, issues that we are now engaged in. We've already done the vision. Um, again, Tom and Ren are two members of a three-team self-assessment uh, subcommittee. They have, in fact, pretty well finished a self-assessment survey, which will be going to all elementary teachers. Um, we're working with the university and uh, hope to get their assistance in actually crunching the numbers and uh, interpreting the results. So those kinds of issues are going on. Um, and as a uh, also kind of a note on science, I want to congratulate Steve Conley, again, our, our finalist for the National Teacher Award, who through that, not directly through that process, but as a, um, as a sort of recognition from another source, received a gift of $500 to spend in his science programs. And Jill Bell, who is a member of our uh, 
extended team um, who has been for the last two summers attending a uh, science um, program uh, most, mostly focused on uh, chemistry and applications in business. She's received uh, for her efforts a $1,000 um, contribution for the elementary science systems and they're happily thinking about uh, and working with colleagues as to how to spend it. So congratulations to those two. Questions, comments? Moving on. Uh, some of us actually, um, Priscilla um, and Beth and myself worked with Carol Wishcamper yesterday. Um, spent some, uh, what was it, about three hours, I guess, collapsing some of the data from the focus groups. We'll be completing that uh, exercise immediately after the holiday break and we'll be reporting, of course, in the workshop on the 16th. We will be inviting all the people who participated as well as feeding them back some information beforehand so that they can react to it um, and uh, give us feedback as to how, accurate they, how accurately they feel we've captured their their uh, thoughts. I think you'll find it interesting. I certainly found the exercise interesting and I think yeah. Yeah. Um, we will have an interesting um, workshop on that one. You missed the research strand. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. We met, you have um, minutes in your packet from last month's meeting and we met again this afternoon. Uh, we're continuing to meet with Jim Curry uh, and this is very much an organic process because each time we meet we see a, a wider uh, application for what we're doing. Um, the focus for us now is to prepare some materials for presentation at the February Staff Development Day as well as continue the um, analysis of um, developing a common language and a common vision for research throughout the district. Gail joined us this afternoon. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. Um, not particularly except I came home very charged up from what we talked about and and the direction that we're going to be taking and the things we're going to explore. I think it's very exciting. Each meeting has been um, a, one that where substance, a range of sort of visionary issues but practical issues um, are emerging from that. I think you'll we're sort of anxious to get stuff out there for you but we're still working on it. And my final point, uh, again, uh, Ponco Middle School open house. Um, I think Gail Dransfield, who was our chairperson, our hostess for the uh, event, uh, deserves a lot of, lot of thanks. There was a great deal of detail goes into that kind of thing, and frankly, I don't, just don't think we could have gotten it done. So thank you very much, Gail. Also, I want to um, just sort of publicly thank, even though many people were there at that open house, this is another opportunity to thank the many people who were involved. Um, and obviously that includes uh, the building committee, Paul Liberty, Bob Howe, Jeff White, Bill Jordan, Dick Dalbeck, Michael Roy, Charlie Greer, and Chapman. It's impossible to log the numbers of hours that that group has put in. Also, I think it's very important to thank the teachers uh, and the administrators who were part of that group, not as an official part of the building committee, but gave of their time and helped a lot in um, bringing to the architects and to the building committee the teacher uh, and uh, sort of pragmatic issues that only this group would know. Um, Nancy Hutton, I don't think you missed a meeting. If you did, uh, it must have been one I missed too. Um, and uh, originally, of course, Beth Henderson was, was there from, the, from Pond Cove and then moved on. Uh, she hasn't continued to attend the meetings since she, <laughs> since she changed, but we'll thank her anyway for what she did do. Susie Darian from the middle school, um, and Susie was just terrifically valuable. The, the, um, all the, the color uh, choices, I think they, those of you who walk into the building and like the color choices, not that... <laughs> Not that Charlie, you didn't have something to do with it too, and Beth, and whoever else was. Ian, were you involved with that one yeah. too? Um, but um, I really, <laughs> the artist's eye, I think, is there too. I, I have to comment. My 15 year old, who hadn't been in the building until the open house, wanted to know why we use so much blue. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I enlightened her a little bit about the composition of the committee. Well, it, it works. I also would like, I need to recognize, we need to recognize Beth Curia, who has been through this whole process and every meeting was a part of our um, 
movable equipment subcommittee, and she's put a lot of time, and I think she needs to be publicly recognized. I think it, it all comes down to the, the point of view of a child, and her daughter asked, why weren't you recognized? <laughs> you were part of that <laughs> building committee. And she was as a, an, an official member, and she's a very important, integral part, and I want to recognize that officially. Well, I think Thank that's can, really. can I, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm glad you said that, because I was going to bring it up. And going back farther, farther than that, um, to when uh, we were struggling so hard to get this passed, and I don't know how many countless hours um, we spent putting together that newspaper insert. I, it is incredible the amount of work Beth did on this project, which, which she wasn't even officially a part of. Um, just an amazing contribution, and you should have been recognized the other day. So, thank you. I'm very embarrassed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell Libby that. <laughs> but I'll say, it, through the eyes of a child, it enlightened me. Mm. Well, I think that's a, certainly a point well taken. She, she was certainly there through it all. Uh, going back to the teachers, Ann Caliandro, who will never let us forget casework. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm sure we still don't have enough, but at the same time, she was a wonderful advocate for all of that. And of course, Shari <coughs> Robinson, who uh, it was kind of nice to see her face light up when she finally saw the, the media center. Um, and I was relieved that it, it did meet her expectations. Um, again, for the open house uh, and for all the uh, the, you know, the student guides were terrific. I had so many comments from people about how um, polite they were, how um, informative, um, and they were just just delightful. We really thanked them a lot. Gail Schmader, having the kids write the letters to the taxpayers, I've had a number of comments about that. How um, it just, you know, kind of bowled over some people were when they actually picked them up and read them. I think it was a wonderful touch. Uh, our parent associations who brought in um, their own uh, decorations and so forth um, and stayed throughout the uh, afternoon passing out punch. Uh, and just, I know that there are people here that I'm not mentioning or have not intentionally overlooked, but it was a community celebration and uh, all the administrators, all the teachers, all the parents and students, um, Thank you, and I'm so grateful it was not snowing, not raining, not sleeting, and it's done. <laughs> it's over with. I, I have two more, two more thank yous that I, you went down my whole list of people I wanted to recognize, but I wanted the town to be aware that the IGA um, had let us use the helium tank and we could deliver all those balloons there and they blew them up for us. Um, Sunday afternoon, and also Seaward Nurseries uh, let me borrow all those poinsettias that decorated the stage, and um, I thought that was in the spirit of community celebration and would like to publicly thank them. And I don't think I mentioned in the building committee, again, these people who were there and don't get recognized. Uh, Michael McGovern, of course, was not an official member of the committee, but we certainly thank him a lot for all of his support. And he felt like a member of the building committee. <laughs> so that's my, uh, my report. Moving on, we will go to school board subcommittees and reports. Charlie, Finance Committee. Uh, we met this evening at 6.30 in the chamber conference room, approved, uh, did appropriations <laughs> review, um, did a preliminary budget discussion, looking at the budget analysis for 96-97, looked at the town valuation, for the upcoming fiscal budget, um, reviewed some athletic stipend changes, and um, I gave a presentation on the past cooperative agreement budget. Any questions or comments? Moving on, school building committee. I was not there. Uh, Charlie, were you there? Actually, it's kind of almost like my last kind of report. I think we didn't set a meeting for a day for our next meeting. So I think it's as need arises. We still need to do the maintenance plan. Right. But I think that's kind of open-ended. But as far as some of the, um, the hardcore issues, um, it actually was one of the, the, it was probably the hardest meeting because we actually expended our budget. <laughs> And it was a vote that was very hard to take. No one wanted to take it. And we knew we had to take it. Um, 
One of the things that um, we were down to essentially about, um, I think about 23,000 left in our contingency. And one of the problems that has arisen and continues, continues to plague us is the, the outside wall of the middle school gym, which now is partly the interior wall of our administrative wing, and continues, no matter what we've done to it to, to weatherproof, it continues to, block, to, to do, present some leaking problems. So the architectural firm has suggested, and we voted um, to do it, which expended our contingency, is to continue the clapboarding, which we put in place to replace the windows in that facility down the, down the side of that administrative wing to meet the roof of the administrative wing. And they feel that that truly will sol finally solve the problem. And I think aesthetically it will look a lot better if that whole wall is actually clapboarded, not just partially clapboarded. Um, and Caliandro happens to, to view that every day, and she says it just looks like an unfinished wall. And I think aesthetic, it will look good, and it also will take care of uh, the problem. Um, we just essentially discussed some issues that are still ongoing and um, adjourned our meeting. It was actually one of our shorter meetings. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions or comments? Uh, next year you'll sing Auld Lang Syne. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Policy subcommittee, Anne. Um, the policy subcommittee met last November 30th. Uh, we had a we had a fun meeting. We had Jack uh, Nichols joined us, the new community liaison officer, um, to advise us on some policies we were looking at, including uh, weapons in schools and locker searches and student interrogations. All of those, uh, we had a long, long discussion. We still have a lot of questions, a lot of um, tweaking of wording we want to do, so those are still under review. Um, we also discussed uh, uh, having a policy on high school course credit prior to grade nine for any students who may be taking a course at the high school, and we will, um, we, we do have a first reading of that, so we can discuss that um, under new business. Um, and I said, uh, and we also have our bus driver drug and alcohol policy, which hopefully we can vote on <laughs> tonight after many, many revisions. Um, and I said in, in my memo uh, to you that the advisory group for a reading instruction policy was meeting um, last Friday. We did in fact meet. We had representatives from all three schools there. Um, I think it was a, it was a good meeting. Um, what we basically decided to do was to go forward with the school board trying to draft a policy stating, you know, the, the overweening value of literacy and the importance of literacy for, um, for our kids and also as part of every teacher's job. Um, and also trying to get a handle on um, the assessment aspect of that. We're going to be doing, uh, talking about that at um, the policy meeting when we discuss assessment, which is January 3rd. Um, and in the meantime, the teachers, the teacher group is going to go ahead and try to um, put together some kind of standards and guidelines by grade level or by clusters of grades, however it turns out to, to work, um, you know, be most manageable. Um, I, it, by the end of this meeting, I, I really thought that um, there was a lot of energy behind articulating what we're trying to do um, with, with literacy in this system. So we will keep you updated as we go along. Um, our next two policy subcommittee meetings are December 20th um, from 8.30 to 10.30, where we'll be discussing if we have drafts back of uh, the weapons and locker search policies, we'll do that, and also discuss some high school um, issues, school board ethics, um, whatever we can cram into those two hours. We seem to um, not have enough time. And then, as I said, January 3rd from 8.30 to 10.30, we'll, we will be taking a look at achievement tests that are given system-wide, why they're given, what the results have been looking, looking like the past few years, because we haven't really had an overview of that. Thank you, Anne. Uh,
Art Curriculum Report. Keith? Uh, thank you. We met uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, had a very good meeting. Uh, we're in the stage right now of uh, collection of information, basically, in terms of what we have uh, for existing programs. Uh, yesterday, we listened to reports uh, mostly from uh, the, the Pond Cove Middle School and High School uh, visual art teachers. Our, our next meeting, we're going to be dealing more with the, the performing arts side, uh, of course, and band. Um, it's a very good committee. It's very well represented, I think. Uh, most of the, the teachers in the various arts areas are represented. Uh, Thank you, Nancy, for facilitating. It's uh, Nancy St. John is, is facilitating the, the meeting. It's going it's going quite well. Uh, the the next arts curriculum meeting is going to be Monday, January eighth, at four o'clock in the Pond Cove Art Room. Thank you, Keith. Uh, the next committee is staff development. Um, we met, I forgot, last week, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure of the exact date. We think we have all of the plans finalized for the Monday, I mean, for the uh, January 2nd um, teacher workshop day. We really are just ironing out details now. It will be devoted to technology. It was the number one area that most teachers were interested in, um, and then we developed a a group of courses which we've been placing um, teachers in. Um, the details are just about finalized. We will be meeting on um, Monday, December 18th to really finalize them. And then again on Monday, January 8th to evaluate how that day went and work on the planning of the February 16th date, which is the second date we are responsible for. There's a tentative schedule for the February, oh, maybe it's not. I thought there was a tentative schedule for the February 16th included. I have one if anyone's interested in, interested in it. It is curriculum uh, K-12 uh, that we'll be looking at most of the time. And if anyone has any questions on either of the days or... You, days. you do have the draft for February 16th in here, or at least it's in my copy. You might because you're on the committee. Oh. Um, I'm not sure everybody got it. Um, and I'm not sure where this memorandum came from that was in my packet. I don't think this came from the Staff Development Committee. You know what that is? <laughs> when, I when I compiled those questionnaires about what's being done in the curriculum now, that was the list of, of um, items that came out of it. I hope that it did actually go to the Technology yes, Committee. Yes, oh, I, I think it is good for people to see what, uh, right. what teachers are listing. I hope it was at least self-explanatory what it was. But instead, rather than doing it from yeah. me, I did it under. Great. <laughs> from that staff came, development. came your planning. Mm -hmm. out, of that rec out of those recommendations mm -hmm. came yeah. the actual day. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Moving on, we have unfinished business policy, second readings. Okay, here it is. <laughs> policy on drug and alcohol <laughs> testing of bus drivers. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I hope you called Scott like I directed you to if you did, and so that tonight there are no, no further questions or problems with this policy. None of them of our making, of course. It's all just been a matter of um, getting the legalese in order. Um, but this is the latest version um, signed off by, by our attorneys. So it should be fine, and we need it in place January 1st. So. Are there any questions, or we entertain a motion? I move that we um, accept file EEAEAA, Policy on Drug and Alcohol Testing of Bus Drivers, and the uh, accompanying administrative rule. Is there a second? Dale? Second. Any discussion? Charlie? What happens to our other policies? This is, it meshes with our other okay. policies. That was one of the things that was being checked for very carefully. Right. Okay. Because I was just looking at the disciplinary action, and I was just wondering if that was in conflict with that policy. We've been assured by no. our attorneys okay. that they, they will be seamless. Okay. <laughs> 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 and
and having spent a lot of time on that other policy. I know. <laughs> I know. Any other comments, questions? Okay. All those in favor? Six zero. Gail seconded. Moving on to new business. The first item is discussion and possible action on proposal proposal of school service delivery option committee. You want me to come in? Sure, why don't you? Okay. Um, I I think it was three years ago when Jeannie Ginn Marvin was uh, before actually, maybe it was more than three years ago, before she actually uh, served on the town council, she had served uh, on a community service option study, uh, delivery study committee uh, for the council. And we had some conversation with the council following the uh, unveiling of their report that a similar report would be helpful for the school department. Uh, at the time, we were pretty heavily involved with planning for and finally executing our building uh, projects. And we said, you know, that sounded nice, but let's get this out of the way. So the time has come, and you have the language. Um, I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, you also have a process, uh, which is um, that the committee shall consist of seven citizens jointly appointed by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council and the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Citizens wishing to serve shall apply to the Town Council Appointments Committee. The Appointments Committee shall be joined by two school board members in screening and recruiting applicants to serve and shall recommend a slate of nominees. The purpose of the committee, the committee is charged with reviewing all services necessary to support, and the support is underlined in the charge, the educational commission of the community. This excludes classroom teaching, special education, and guidance. It includes such areas as transportation, food service, facilities management, purchasing, accounts payable, payroll, clerical assistance, and financial management. The committee shall also review areas in which there might be improved collaboration between the municipal and school departments in all service areas. Um, the committee charge shall undertake the reviews outlined above. Shall pre the committee shall present a preliminary report to the school board no later than October 1st, 1996. The school board may comment upon the report prior to a final report being prepared. And the committee shall present a final report to the town council and school board no later than December 31st, 1996. Frankly, I think it's an excellent uh, opportunity for our people in the community who, particularly those who are um, interested in business management to come in and take a look at how the school manages its business. Also, of course, we do in fact work with the town in a variety of ways, including sharing our clerical assistance to do deal with all payroll and um, um, accounts pay receivable and payable uh, operations and uh, our business manager actually also um, does some things for the town side of the budget. So we welcome people in. Thank you. There may have been some minor changes in wording last night at the town oh, council meeting. Yes, I think, yes. Actually, um, we did check that today. And I have another copy that says, the superintendent, the business manager, will be ex officio members but non-voting of that committee. And I, I do see, um, I'm not sure if this is part of that or not, uh, recruiting applicants to serve and shall recommend a slate of nominees who shall reflect the diversity of the full community. I assume that will be hashed out with the school board and the town appointments committee, exactly what that means. Connie, do you need a motion for us to accept <laughs> yes. this charge? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? And I move that we accept the charge of, uh, of the Cape Elizabeth School Service Delivery Study Committee. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. I hope Jean's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The next item is policy, first reading, and. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
this policy is awarding of high school course credit prior to grade nine. Um, my understanding of how this came about is actually this, this past year, the, the uh, Commissioner of Education for the first time said that um, schools actually could award course credit to children not enrolled at a high school if they chose to. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> Yes, so so all, all I, think, I think it is a legislature, uh, but that's okay. Never mind. So, so anyway, this came, this um, you know came came this issue came up to us. Um, to be honest, when it first came to us, it came to us um, in an, the opposite way from the way we're we're looking at it here, which is saying that we would not um, uh, give high school credit for for um, students who are taking courses at the high school. Um, we had an extended discussion about this, and please, please jump in, um, other people who were there, um, at the policy meeting about this. Um, and I think what we came down um, as thinking is that a, a child in, in middle school who may be taking a course at the high school is taking a, a course appropriate for their particular level, um, which is not to say that they shouldn't still have a full course of study when they get to the high school. Um, one, one of the things that the high school is working on very hard this year is the idea of maybe expanding the requirements. And um, at, at the last uh, staff development day, there was a full faculty meeting, which some, some school board members um, attended, uh, where there was a discussion about making the four years a really full four years um, and um, it did not seem to be in line with that thinking to have a situation where we were actually encouraging kids to amass credits which may in fact uh, allow them if they chose to graduate <coughs> early and that's very that's a very short possibly incomplete synopsis of what I remember people saying so if anybody would like to add <coughs> anything Rick, did you want to add anything? Okay, that's there. Okay. At a faculty meeting yesterday, I did share with them um, the policy subcommittee uh, re um, recommendation, and they su obviously supported that more so than the idea of awarding credits. Okay. That it is considered an acceleration program for, or accelerated program for the student or students that need those requirements at the high school. Nancy, did you want to say anything about it? No, fine. Okay. Should probably just add for people who are listening and can't hear that courses that that a student took at the high school could be listed on their transcript. It just would not um, they would not be used to compute the GPA. And that's consistent with how we've handled the uh, foreign language program that children have taken um, an exam at the end of eighth grade and often are placed in a second year or third year level language, excuse me, and it is noted on their transcript, but they are not and have not been given credit um, for first year in a language. So applying to different schools, um, if you need two years of a language or three years of a language, you'd either take French two, three, and four rather than counting your first year in the middle school as your first year of a language. So I think this is consistent with what has been the practice to date. Right. Charlie? And I agree. I think this would, this would add to the compression of, of, of freshman and sophomore scheduling even more. And we're trying to strengthen and lengthen it. We, we also thought it might open a bit of a can of worms in terms of uh, children, you know, feeling pressure to take those high school courses to amass those credits on there, and it just seemed to um, create more potential problems than it solved. Great, thanks. Any other feedback Any on the policy? Any wording issues or anything, or otherwise it'll come back just the same next month. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item is school board appointment to sabbatical committee. Oh, yes. Um, we have had one um, request for consideration for a sabbatical, uh, and per our contract, we need a member of the school board uh, who will be part of a review process. 
Are there any volunteers? I know Charlie did it last year. Isn't that right? I think you did it last year. I've mm -hmm. forgotten. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did it last year. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I have not volunteered. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I, I was looking for somebody else to volunteer. What about Carla? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is anybody here would like to volunteer, or I can ask Carla if she would do it? It's usually one meeting. It, um, Priscilla want to know what it entails. It really means it's only one meeting. Oh, I'll do it. Priscilla will do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nominations for coaching positions and co-curricular positions, which are uh, in your packet. Actually, we also um, tonight updated it because through the interview process, we have two more athletic positions, so reading them all. Co-curricular position change for school year 1995-96. Um, earlier, we had appointed Kurt McCandless as the um, high school chair of the high school math team. Uh, and that's being changed to Tony Gigoni uh, sharing that with Christine Newell for the rest of the year. Um, Dottie Anderson has resigned as the second grade team leader and uh, um, I'm nominating Joe Thayer for that position for the rest of the school year. Those are the co-curricular positions, athletic fee positions, boys indoor track, Larry Greer, girls indoor track, Larry Greer, assistant indoor track, part-time Bill Rice, and assistant indoor track, part-time Scott Hendry. Seventh grade girls basketball, Maureen Messer, and eighth grade girls basketball, David Mason. And you have a little information about those two people added at the bottom of the page. So we we'll, can cover all of them if you wish. Any questions? I have a question, Connie. Is it an um, indoor track? Is that what's run in the high school in the mm -hmm. wintertime? Mm -hmm. Are they still running in the high school, or are they moving to Pond Cove Middle School since that's so big and long? Oh, well, the, the oh, middle school, the school will be team. doing that. Okay. Our team will be running our <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a motion? I'll make it. Give <laughs> Ann a rest. <laughs> I move acceptance of the co-curricular positions and the athletic fee positions for 95-96 school year as stated by the superintendent. Is there a second? Gail? Any discussion? All those in favor? 6-0. Next item is superintendent. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, um, in December, we usually have a little item on the agenda that talks about the school board voting to affirm that they have a superintendent. It's an old statute, and every year that I've been a superintendent, and this makes 13, I've tried to explain to boards why that's on the books. However, it does serve a useful purpose in the fact that it, it um, does affirm who your superintendent for the year is and is also an opportunity for superintendents and boards to talk about extending the contract or possibly not extending it depending on circumstances. So I'm taking this opportunity to um, thank the board for the five and a half years I've served with you. Um, thank the administrative team, which I think is one of the finest I've had the opportunity to work with. Thank the staff, uh, which is clearly one of the finest staffs I've had the opportunity to work with. Uh, certainly the kids are terrific, but the time has come for me to uh, stop being a superintendent. I've done it for 13 years and um, I really have reached a stage in my life when I would like to have some time to pursue a number of interests. I have a book I'd like to write. I think I'll call it the common sense, well, let's see, the, uh, yeah, the common sense book of school reform because I think there's an awful lot of stuff out there that talks about school reform either in very heavy pedantic and, and sometimes non-useful ways. I think if we applied a little common sense we might get further. Uh, of course, it's going to have all kinds of interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> I will naturally change the names and the circumstances so nobody will be able to recognize themselves. Um, but uh, I'm really looking forward to this next phase in my life, as in many cases you don't know exactly what will happen. I'm sure there'll be the first day of school next year, I'll be a little antsy, but I think I'll manage to overcome that feeling. And so. Um, I'm not extending my contract this year, and thank you very much. And you'll probably hear a lot from me before I disappear into the sunset, so I'm not going to make a speech. 
Well, Connie, we have, I have enjoyed working with you immensely. You're the only superintendent I have worked with, so. <laughs> you will be a very tough model to follow, I am sure. But um, we still have six months to go. Yeah, well, it doesn't, it's over when it's over, but that will be June. Yeah. yeah. June. Well, thank you for your years here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we'll, we'll move on. Move on. You don't want, to, don't want to get into it now. No. Um, next item on the agenda is a consideration by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing discussing negotiations with all our bargaining units. So moved. Is there a second? And <laughs> all those in favor? No, Six zero. That's it. That's it. No. Oh, I didn't announce the meetings. That's okay. Uh, announce it. The, <laughs> the next school board meeting will be on Tuesday, January 9th with a uh, finance committee meeting at 6.30 and the regular school board meeting at 7.30. There will be a school board workshop on Tuesday, January 16th on the focus group results on the mission statement. That will be at 7 o'clock at the Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium. There will be a policy subcommittee meeting on Wednesday, December 20th and Wednesday, January 3rd. Both are at 8.30 in the council chambers conference room. There will also be a school board workshop on Tuesday, January 23rd on the drug programs, guidance curriculum, the purposes and um, goals of all those programs that we'll be discussing. 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock, probably Pond Cove Middle School Cafetoria, and we can announce that. Yeah, at the, it is. Yes, it is. The meeting, oh, the meeting is now adjourned. Need some more? No. no. I think as they say, take out stock in the company.